Hi, I'm Claire. I teach computer applications technology here in Johannesburg. You know how your teacher always tells you to practice past papers? Yeah, that doesn't really help if you don't know how to do half of the stuff. That's what this is for. You'll find a link to the files in the description below, along with the table of contents, so you can just click straight to the question you need help with. We all learn the best from our mistakes, so please, you have to try this by yourself before you watch this video. Let's get into it. So we're starting, they're telling us that the number of glucose tests is stored in column J and in cell E3 they want to determine the average number of glucose level tests. So that's a straightforward average. Start from the top, oh sorry wrong one, all the way down. Next. Um, in cell E4 we need to use the data in column I to determine the number of type 2 diabetics. Now, if you have a look here, you'll see there's a type 2 that has medication and insulin and a type 2 that's medication only. So we want to do one function that counts all of them. So what we want to do is we want to do a count if, and our range is simple, that's our range, but our criteria is a bit more interesting. So the criteria in this um, instance is not just type 2. We actually add a star at the end. That star acts as a wild card and it means that there can be any characters after the star. The um, cell just needs to start with a type 2 and then it gets the right number. So for this one they say the income is in column K and we need to find out the income for all the male diabetics. Now, um, this spreadsheet actually contains diabetic survey. So all of these people have diabetic. That's not a separate test we need to do. We just need to find out what the income is of all the males. So we would literally go and take that one plus that one plus those two. So the way to do that to sum things on a specific criteria is with a sum if. Let's have a look how that works again. So with a sum if, I'm going to open my fx, my function arguments. I prefer starting from the bottom, you're welcome to do it your way. Um, the sum range they've given us, they've said the um, income is in column k. Just going to select that. And then my criteria. Who am I looking for? I'm looking for male people. Okay, now I can't click on male over here because what if they made a mistake and Austin Richards is actually a lady. So I can't ever click there. I need to type in male. I can't click on something that's in the data. And then my range is where can it go and look for that word male? That's in the gender column. Okay, so see it that goes from 8 to 207 and both of them have the same number of cells. Now, column A has two names for each diabetic. We need to extract the first name only. So how do we know what this person's first name is? It's the one that appears first and the second name starts after the space. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to find the position of the space because that's what we're going to need to extract the first name. So I'm going to use the function find and it starts, the first argument is find text. So I want to find a space. So I literally just type a space in parentheses, comma, within text, within that text. Now, you'll see if you look at this um, tooltip, I don't have to continue with this function because anything that's in square brackets in Excel in a function means it's optional. So you don't have to include that if you don't need it. We don't need it, so that's enough. All right, so the space is in position 8. And over here, if I, I'm just going to take this down just to have a look. Um, for example, with this one, the space is position 5. The space is position 5. The space is position 6. So every time I want to extract the number of characters of the space minus 1, because I want to extract the first 7 characters, the first 6 characters, the first 6 characters, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this function. Let me just, I'm going to cut it to keep it in the memory. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a left because I want to extract the name from the left hand side. The left is from the, of this text. And in this case, I want to specify the number of characters, even though it's not compulsory. So comma. Now the number of characters, I can't enter the number eight because they're not all going to be, the space is not for all of them at, at position eight. So I'm actually going to use that function that I've done as the number of characters. And because I don't want the space itself as well, I'm going to say minus one so that it doesn't include the space as well. And if we test that, we don't have to copy it down, but if we test that, you'll see it works in every instance. All right, now in cell D9, we need to uh, add a few things together. So we need to add together the name, the first name, with a space, and then with a surname. Now they've actually said it should be a function, so technically we should use the function concatenate. Let me just show you how you would do that. Concatenate. Um, the first text string that I want is the name, comma. The second text string I want is a space, so that I put in parentheses. The third string of text I want is the surname. And then after that, I don't need any more, so I'll just close the brackets. That's the one way you could do it. Personally, I prefer using the ampersand. The ampersand basically acts as glue to hold pieces of text together. So I've got the first name, piece of glue, what do I want? I want a space in parentheses, piece of glue, add together the surname. So I've got three pieces there that I've added together with my two ampersands in the middle. Okay, the date of birth is stored here in column E. And in F11, we need to use a function to extract the month from this date of birth. So the function to do that is very simple. It's just called month. And this is the number from which it needs to extract the month. There you go. Now, in cell G12, they want us to actually display the name of the month in which this lady was born. So the 10th month we all know is October, but we need the computer to actually go and look that up for us. So we're going to use a VLOOKUP and they've instructed us to do so. And they've said the data is provided in the month's worksheet. So if we have a look here, we have two columns. The first column has the number of the month and the second column has the name of the month. So this is what we have and this is what we want. Okay, so let's go back over there and we start our VLOOKUP. Now, what we have here is we have the number 10 and we need to find the month. So we're going to do VLOOKUP and let's do it with our function arguments. The lookup value is what do we have? I have the number 10. My table array is where should this thing go and look for this? This is in the months sheet and that's the data range. Now, because I want to be able to copy this down, I don't have to, but because it has to be able to copy down, I am going to make this absolute. I'm going to lock it so that it won't move if I copy the function. Now, if we have a look here, the first column contains what I have, so the second column contains what I want. So the column index number is what, which column answer do you want? Column 2. And the range lookup, do you see it's not bold? That means it's optional. If we would be typing it, let me just take out that, well I don't need to take out bracket, let's say okay. You'll see if I'm actually typing it here, it shows you that the range lookup is optional. So in this case, we don't have to have it, but the range lookup would be false, exact match, because we wanted to actually give an error if it would be month 13, for example, because that doesn't exist. So false gives us exact values. Lastly, we need to do a conditional formatting on column K, on the values in column K. So I'm going to select them all, or you could have just selected the whole column, that's also fine and we go to conditional formatting. Now they've told us we need to use a icon set. So what I'm going to do is that's the icon set we want. It's three arrows colored, but I need to set specific values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to more rules and then I'm going to change the settings over here. So I don't want the circles. If I go up, you'll see if you hover over it, it actually gives you the name. It's the three arrows colored that we want. And they've given us very specific values that needs to go here. So it's not in terms of percentage, it's actually in terms of number. So I've changed both of those two numbers. Let's have a look at the values we need to use. So 
they've given us three values here. Anything that's above 500,000. So it's not including, so it's just above 500,000. Then the next one they've given us is, if we just move a bit that way, is from 300,001 to 500,000. So this is actually included, this one. So we're going to say greater than or equal to 300,001. You could have also changed this to larger than or greater than and made it just 300,000. Either way would have worked. But let's just do it as the example. Now, automatically what this is going to do is it's going to apply the green icon to everything that's above 500,000 and it's going to apply the yellow icon to everything that is from 300,001 to 500,000 and anything below that, so that's the third range, zero to 300,000, will be the red icon.